to start with, before we really get our teeth stuck into any human anatomy, I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the terms that we use when we describe the human body, because there's a whole range of terms that are actually really, really useful in working out where you are in the human body. And we use them anatomically, but obviously we use them in medicine and surgery as well. So they're kind of generic terms that it's very useful to get your head around early on. So when we talk about the human body, you can obviously organise your body in all sorts of ways. Here I am sitting on the floor in front of the sofa, which I know is a bit odd. Uh, but I could be lying down, I could be standing up, I could have my arms in different orientations. And it gets a bit confusing if you're trying to describe where something is in the body. Right, let's start off by defining something called the anatomical position. Sounds a bit strange, but what it is, is a posture that we always refer back to when we're using anatomical terminology and trying to pin down where something is in the body. The anatomical position is simply somebody standing upright with their palms facing forward. So their arms straight down by their sides, actually, and their palms facing forwards. So it means that if I were to say that this is the front of my forearm, I don't say front, actually, I say anterior. Even if I put my forearm into a different posture, that's still anterior because it's anterior in the anatomical position. So the anatomical position is a kind of reference point for the whole body. Then there are very specific definitions of regions when it comes to anatomy. We, we do tend to divide the body up uh, into smaller and smaller pieces in anatomy. So anatomy itself means cutting apart anatomy. So if we cut up the body into regions, we might talk about the head, uh, the neck, the, the thorax, the abdomen, the pelvis, and then we have the limbs. Now, the limbs is where we start to get some strange terminology creeping in, or at least different terminology than you would use in everyday life. So you might be used to thinking of this whole thing as your arm, no longer. The arm, anatomically, is just this segment. It's from the shoulder to the elbow. So that's the arm or the brachium, if you prefer. Below the elbow, between the elbow and the wrist, We've got something we call the forearm. Now that's a familiar word. Uh, the Latin term for that would be antibrachium. So arm and forearm. And then also in the leg, there's a similar thing going on where anatomically now, if you talk about the leg, you don't mean the whole thing that starts at the hip and finishes at the foot. You mean just the part that starts at the knee and finishes at the ankle. So that's the leg, whereas the bit between the hip and the knee is more familiar, the thigh. So then we get ourselves into some trouble if we think, well, how do I describe the whole limb then? If just that segment there is the arm, what's the whole thing? The whole thing is the upper limb. So you are now no longer allowed to call this whole appendage sticking off the side of your body the arm. You have to call it the upper limb. Similarly with the leg, now you know that the leg is just that bit between the knee and the ankle. That means that limb down there has to be called something else. We call it the lower limb. So you've changed your mind now about what arm and leg actually mean and you'll stick with it. Now I'm going to talk about some directional terms. Uh, so if we're trying to describe different structures in the body relative to each other, then these directional terms are really, really useful. So you might find that they're useful in anatomy. They're also going to be useful when you're examining a patient. They're also going to be useful in surgery as well. So very useful terms which just help us describe, I suppose, the landscape of the body. So some of these terms I've already mentioned. Anterior is one of them. So the, the front of the body is now the anterior. The, the back of the body is the posterior. Another way of describing that that you'll come across is that the anterior surface of the body may be described as ventral because it relates to ventrum, uh, which is the tummy, basically. And you might hear the posterior being referred to as dorsal. So it relates to the back of the body, the dorsum. So they're almost interchangeable, those terms anterior or ventral and posterior or dorsal. Then there are words that relate to how far up or down the body you are. So if you're headed towards the top of the body, you'd say uh, something was superior. So, so my head is superior to my neck and my neck is inferior to my head. 
Now, that's fine if you're standing in an upright position, but you get into a bit of a problem if you're trying to describe where things are. If, for instance, the, the patient is, is lying on an operating table or lying on a couch, because, you know, is the head still superior to the neck, which is inferior? Well, yes, because it always relates back to the anatomical position when somebody's standing up. But in fact, there are other terms that you can use. You can use the term cranial to mean towards the head end of the body. And then the opposite of that is caudal, meaning towards the tail end. Corda is tail in Latin. Then we've got words which refer to how close something is to the midline of the body. So these are interesting terms that are, that are all about this, this midline through your body and whether something is drifting away to the side or coming back to the middle. So if something is, is off to the side, we say it's lateral. If something is coming at more towards the midline, we'd say it's medial. So I would say that my this end of my clavicle is, is medial, so that sternal end of my clavicle is medial, the acromial end is, is lateral. So they're relative terms. Actually, if you have something right in the centre of the body, then you can use the term median because it's right in the centre. We also have terms which relate specifically to the limbs and how far along a limb you are or how far along a bone, for instance. So if you were talking about um, uh, one of these forearm bones, the radius and the ulna, uh, the top of the bone you might describe as proximal and the bottom of the bone distal. And you can see how those terms are better than top and bottom because it doesn't matter which way up the body is, it doesn't matter where that bone is in space, in 3D space, this is always going to be proximal because it's towards the body and this is always going to be distal because it's going away from the body. So proximal and distal, going towards the body, going away from the body, really useful when you're talking about the position of structures in the limbs. Another really useful term, because anatomy is three-dimensional and not just about the surface of the body, is uh, this, this pair of terms superficial and deep. Superficial, as you'd expect, relates to structures that are towards the surface of the body. So the epidermis is about as superficial as you can get. Underneath that, we've got deeper structures. So those are terms that you're kind of familiar with in everyday language. Superficial means towards the surface and deep is deep. Now, those terms do get translated into Latin when we start to create some names for muscles. So for instance, we have a superficial muscle here which will curl your fingers in, flex your fingers. So it's called the superficial flexor of the fingers. We don't use that as English terms. We translate it into Latin. So it's called flexor digitorum superficialis. Where there's a superficialis muscle, a superficial muscle, there's normally a deep one as well. So underneath that superficial flexor is a deep flexor in the forearm, and that is called flexor digitorum profundus. Profundus is the Latin for deep the same as profound. So if you have a profound thought, then it's a, it's a deep thought. There are also words that describe planes through the body, which are, again, really useful for looking at anatomy. Uh, so we can imagine planes through the body. We can imagine cutting through a body in a plane. And of course, in the dissection room, you will see actual sections through bodies so that you can see how particularly organs relate to each other inside the abdomen and the thorax and, and muscles and nerves and vessels as we go down the limbs as well. But of course, you'll also use sections or you'll come across sections all the time in radiology. So uh, when we use things like CT scans or ultrasound or MRI scans, we are creating these virtual sections through the body. So we've got great terminology to describe the direction of those planes as they pass through the body. So I think the best way to illustrate that is uh, using a jelly baby. So you might have wondered what I've got in this bowl just here. This is a bowl of jelly babies. And these jelly babies are going to be sacrificed. Well, they might be dead jelly babies already. So this jelly baby, for instance, well, we could draw a line like this. And let's recap some of those previous terms that we've looked at. That's a median line through the body of that jelly baby. Um, if we move towards that line, then we are moving medially. If we're moving away from that line in the body, then that is lateral. Then up towards the top of the 
jelly baby's head, we would say that's cranial. Uh, down towards the bottom, we'd say that's caudal. So there are some of those terms superimposed on that jelly baby, or at least drawn around it. Now, I'm actually going to section this jelly baby. So let's take the jelly baby and put that over there. So you might have wondered why I had a sharp knife and a chopping board. So here it comes. And we're going to actually create some of these um, sections through the body. So I probably need three jelly babies, actually. I'll do, I'll do one for each section. Let's start off with a, a transverse section, though. So a transverse section through um, a jelly baby's body is going to be like that. So it could be anywhere up and down that jelly baby, uh, but that is, a, that is a transverse section. A sagittal section uh, is going to be bringing that knife straight down through the long axis of the body. So here we go. There's a sagittal section. And actually, because it's right in the midline, that one, we could say that's a median sagittal section. So you have a median sagittal section, and then you could have sagittal sections going off to the side as well, more lateral sagittal sections. And that transverse section as well could be, you know, right up to the top of the head, all the way down to the bottom of the feet. So the final section that we're going to look at is the coronal section. Now, corona means crown, and we're very familiar with that prefix at the moment because of coronavirus, which has a kind of crown of spike proteins around the outside of it. This time, though, corona refers to maybe a crown which is a bit more like a tiara. So if you imagine I'm wearing a tiara, and then that's going to be the direction that this plane is going to sink through my body, then I will perform that coronal section on this jelly baby. I'll have to turn it sideways to do that. So here's a coronal section through the jelly baby. So you can imagine some of these coronal sections will be quite anterior and then they would just pass through to the back. So here are the three main planes that we talk about when we're dividing the body up into sections and you will hear these all the time in radiology. So transverse sections, sometimes called horizontal, sagittal and coronal. So these are the three main planes through the body that we use all the time when we're describing radiology as well, when we're describing things like CT scans and MRI scans. You will occasionally come across sections which are oblique as well, so they're, they're angled. These ones are all at right angles to each other. Perhaps the last bit of terminology to just mention at this point are the cavities in the body. So the main cavities are the cranial cavity, which is within the skull, which contains the brain, the thoracic cavity, which is contained within the bony rib cage, and the abdominopelvic cavity, which projects up actually underneath the rib cage and then goes all the way down into the pelvis as well. Well, I think that's enough anatomical terminology for now. Get yourself a package of jelly babies, cut them up, make sure you can do a transverse, a sagittal and a coronal section and have a look at those other terms as well. And then we can start really talking about human anatomy. See you soon.